Hill Development Company and are partnered with President Katie McCummett and Co-Housing Partners, LLC. The two companies provide co-housing development consulting services. Wonderhand, <coughs> Wonderland Hill Development Corporation is the largest developer of co-housing communities in the United States. Jim has served as a trailblazer in the industry, Im implementing energy efficient strategies, leading edge design, and community participation, resulting in award winning neighborhoods that provide maximum value to its residents. Jim will discuss their intentional neighborhood development concept and ideas with some examples of how that's going. Jim? whatever, 
they get, they develop deeper relationships that build social capital. Social capital is a concept that sociologists have studied uh, a lot. Uh, Putnam and others have written books about it, and it's it's very important to human beings uh, to be able to uh, create that kind of value in their lives, and we can do it at a neighborhood scale. This book is one that I've been promoting. It's written by an architect, uh, Ross Chapin, out of uh, uh, the Washington, uh, the Seattle area, and uh, Ross started developing these little pocket neighborhoods that were urban infill, and he's. I used a model where he kind of pushed the cars off to the side and created greens in the middle. And so they looked kind of like this, uh, and then he put a little, maybe a gazebo or a, a little common building in the back. And what he discovered was uh, he was not only creating some beautiful places, but the people that were moving in were making them even more beautiful, and they were connecting with each other, and they were having social things together, and they were figuring out how to make it better. So uh, the whole concept uh, and, and that book has a, a section on, on co-housing. You probably got the most intentional of the pocket neighborhoods. This is uh, the Hearthstone co-housing community, which is not too far from here in Highlands uh, Garden Village. And the typical model for co-housing is uh, you cluster the homes around a common green like this, and then you have a common house. This is Harmony uh, co-housing in gold, and it was done in a very southwestern theme. Common house sets in a prominent place where people see it, they see each other coming and going, so it's a natural magnet for community, and they uh, hang out together, they come there to get their mail, they share meals there, uh, maybe two or three nights a week with uh, neighbors, um, different kinds of programs, and uh, that builds intentional community, which builds social capital. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of examples that we've done recently. Uh, in the Holiday neighborhood, if you get a chance, if you haven't been up to, to Boulder or North Boulder, Holiday neighborhood is very interesting. It was developed by our housing authority. It's 40% permanently affordable housing. Uh, it's integrated, market rate, and affordable. We did two co-housing communities in there uh, under the pretense that they would provide a leading role in creating community in the neighborhood. And indeed, that's happened. We have the Wild Sage community, which is an intergenerational one. And then where I live, is the Silver Sage community, which is a, a senior's version of uh, the co-housing model. And this neighborhood, I think, has become a national model for how, how to do integrated, economically integrated housing successfully. It's a very walkable neighborhood. It's an exciting place to just hang around in uh, with uh, commercial uses out on Broadway and then everything, artist views area, uh, neighborhood park, a lot of things going on there. This is the Wild Sage co-housing community. It's really focused. We found that co-housing attracted uh, young families that were starting to raise children because it's such a great and, and communal environment to raise children in. Uh, we also found, and the Europeans have found this big time, uh, in Denmark and other countries, that the co-housing model works extremely well for seniors and for empty nesters to make that transition out of larger homes into something where it's very community-based, where they know their neighbors well, and they can age in place in an environment that doesn't mean you've got to go into something that feels institutional when you're in your 80s. So this this is Silver Sage on the cover of a book that uh, Chuck Durrett uh, is, uh, my, is married to a partner in California, Katie McCann, and uh, uh, he, he got a grant over and studied the senior model and then came back and wrote and then I want to show you uh, just a, a couple of examples of, of some projects that are going on that uh, we have some involvement in are going on here in the Denver area uh, that are kind of uh, projects of the future with a question mark, I guess. Uh, Eco-villages, you know, there's a lot of talk about eco-villages and uh, what are they. And uh, GEOS is one that uh, was uh, and has been waiting, it's designed and waiting to be, to be uh, fully developed. Uh, in Arvada, on a, what would be a, a suburban site uh, right along Ralston Creek, but it's uh, envisioned to be a, a net zero energy uh, community with a lot of the same kind of uh, features that I've, I've just described there in the Holiday neighborhood and others. And we had planned, we are planning to do two uh, co-housing communities in, uh, within GEOS as kind of a 
nucleus for the, the most uh, aggressive or progressive community portion of, of the, the neighborhood. So that's one model that we're uh, seeing emerge. Uh, and, uh, and it's really based on uh, the concept of sustainability, but looking at sustainability beyond just green building and uh, energy efficiency. Also looking at the other aspects, economic and social sustainability, and how, how they all integrate together uh, to create uh, something that, that where you capture the synergy of, of, of uh, people working together in their own neighborhood. The, the slide on the right is in Nevada City co-housing where uh, when we completed it, uh, we do a partnering model with our uh, with the future residents. They had a pool of money that came out of that development that they used to, to uh, from an electrical standpoint, put their community uh, at, at net, net zero energy. Uh, they put all the photo tapes on the community. And it was a, a very uh, neighborhood-made decision. It wasn't done by developers or architects or others. This is a new community that uh, is just emerging in uh, the northwest corner of Denver area. It's being uh, developed by uh, Urban Ventures and Perry Rose. Uh, we worked with Perry Rose when we did the Hearthstone Colossal Community in Highland Garden Village. They invited us to do uh, up to two Colossal Communities within the Aria neighborhood. Aria is, is very interesting because it's, uh, it's in an area that is is considered blighted, uh, really has a, a lot of potential. It's right across the street practically from Regis uh, University. And uh, the theme that uh, Urban Ventures and Perry Rose have picked for this development is urban agriculture. And I think that's a really, we're seeing that really emerging now, the interest in actually creating uh, things that you can <laughs> eat and and enjoy right within an urban neighborhood. And uh, they've uh, attracted a, a culinary school that uh, we think is going to go in there uh, along with the, the uh, co housing communities. It's an ideal environment to start to integrate community, architecture, and uh, place making. That's the uh, Mary Crest Convent. This is the site of, of the Mary Crest Convent, 17 acres. I'm not sure exactly, but it's about 400 units, I think, uh, total going in there. Uh, the initial plan was to tear this building down. And uh, after we looked at it, with, especially uh, with uh, Urban Ventures and Prairie Rose, we said, well, you know, this might become a, a senior co-housing community, and uh, we can use this as a rock solid building. And so that's our current plan. And part of it will, will be the culinary school, part of it will be senior co-housing. So it's a, it's a real experiment in uh, uh, urban design, architecture, and uh, community building. Last uh, thing I just want to share with this is in the heart of Boulder. We're currently doing a, a neighborhood that's like eight blocks from the Pearl Street Mall in Boulder. So it's a short walking distance. This is the ideal neighborhood to live in if you want to walk and get rid of your cars. And we have the RTD bus going by every 10 minutes on Broadway that runs up to the university and, and beyond and, and connects to the Denver buses and the airport buses. The, uh, the whole effort, it's a pilot program in the LEED uh, neighborhood uh, uh, program. Uh, we're restoring the historic Washington School as part of it. There are six single family homes on the site around the park that will be uh, net zero homes. So we're we're trying to throw everything we can at community here. It's a co-housing community of 33 units. So that, that the future residents are very much a part of the planning for this. So this is our, sort of our motto for our company. Community is a secret ingredient in sustainability. And my whole career has been trying to figure out how to build uh, better, more energy efficient housing. And we've experimented with a lot of solar housing through the years. And, uh, things like that. But I think what has really uh, come to light for me in, in uh, the last few years is, is this is really about neighborhood placemaking. That's the most important part of it, and I know all of you are tuned into that. Uh, I would just urge you to really consider the community aspect. There's, there's been architect leaders, you know, like Christopher Alexanders and others have, that have 
work together with the people, the, whole, the, the architects that are currently doing co-housing are doing the same thing. They're working with the future neighbors to program their, their neighborhood. And they're not doing it because they're going to get a much better product by doing it. They're doing it because they'll get, they, they actually, in the end, will get a lot better product after they get done with their part of the designing and the people take it over and really make it into a, a, a lasting, uh, really exceptional community. And we've, we've seen that true, and, and we've got 20 years in these communities now. So that's my spiel. Thank you, Blake. Thank you.